Yo, what's up guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. And today I have a preview of iOS 14.4. Now, depending on when you watch this, it actually might be out already, but I've got it a bit early and I wanna show you all the new features because even though it's called iOS 14.4 and that would lead you to believe it's probably a pretty major update with a ton of new features like 14.3 or 14.2 before it, uh, it's kind of a different story when you start looking at what is actually new in iOS 14.4. So let's go ahead and jump in, drop a like if you're excited, hit subscribe for more. Let's go ahead and check it out. So up first, Apple says the camera app now has the ability to scan smaller QR codes. This is kind of a weird one to me because I wasn't aware that uh, small QR codes were something that we needed, but it's cool that the support is here. I mean, obviously there's been this toggle in Control Center for like just QR codes for a while, but of course, I mean, the main way to do it is just camera. When you hold the QR code in front of your phone, it'll automatically detect it and then you tap on the banner. So if you were ever encountering some teensy weensy QR codes as we could call them, then iOS 14.4 should be better at handling those. Next up, if we jump over to the Bluetooth settings inside of the settings app, there's a cool new feature Apple's added in 14.4 where you can add a classification for the device type that you have connected. Uh, in iOS 14, Apple added like headphone audio notifications that I think would let you know about things like low battery or connectivity status. Obviously, if the headphone wouldn't just pre-register properly by default, it might think it was like a car stereo or or a hearing aid or a Bluetooth speaker and you couldn't get that functionality. So now there's this new option that we've never had before called device type. You can classify it as any one of these things from car stereo to hearing aid to speaker to other, um, which is just gonna be for everything else not on this list, but most importantly, like uh, the Sony XM4s that I have, they are headphones. Uh, and while they were recognized properly, uh, depending on what brands you buy, they might be categorized differently. So you can change it and get the most features out of that, even, you know, if they're not called AirPods or Beats. And then if you have one of the newer iPhone 12 models, mini, 12, 12 Pro, or iPhone 12 Pro Max, Apple's added a new feature in iOS 14.4 to determine whether your replacement camera parts are genuine. This is a, a weird one. Obviously, when you go to take this to a repair shop, uh, somebody could put anything inside, even if it wasn't like a legitimate Apple lens or uh, you know, camera mechanism in there. The software cannot detect that and tell you. So I guess if you wanted to verify like the authenticity of what you're getting and you don't want to go to an Apple store, like your phone will let you know that uh, something could be off. Now Apple's done this before with things like batteries and I believe some other replacement parts as well. It's, uh, it's always kind of a controversial change because some people like just want to save money and get a cheaper part and your iPhone will continually notify you about it. But for other people like me, I would say, I would always appreciate knowing whether or not what's inside my phone is actually authentic. So if you have one of the new iPhone 12s, this feature is just for you. And while I wish I could tell you there were some more headlining features in iOS 14.4, that's really all that Apple tells us in the change log. The good news is though, there are a few other things that they have not highlighted that are actually new. In fact, I would actually consider the largest feature to be something that I wasn't able to capture on video myself, but uh, my friends over at 9to5Mac, uh, Jeff Benjamin there, at Miles as well, great, you guys should go subscribe to them if you don't already. Anyway, getting back to this, they were able to get the HomePod handoff working. Basically, there was this interface that Apple showed off when they announced the HomePod mini for handoff, basically touching your phone to the HomePod mini or HomePod mini going to transfer the music back to your phone. Genius feature, works on the original HomePod as well, but this is like more of a, a squishy release. Like they both have U1 chips in your phone or in the HomePod if you have a newer phone or the HomePod mini. And it would like know exactly where the two devices were. So it would know exactly how close to get before transferring the music from one place to another or vice versa. It looks incredible. Again, the HomePod update I do not have yet. So I cannot demo it for you on my channel. I wish I could, but uh, full credit goes to 9to5Mac for taking a look at this. And personally, I, I can't wait to try it out. Like I, I did decide to keep my HomePod mini, mainly because I, I kind of wanted to see this feature with my own eyes. And a quick bonus feature I want to show you that is actually part of the newest watch OS update that will come out probably at the exact same time as 14.4. There's a new watch face uh, that looks like this. It's pretty sweet. It's uh, a little bit more abstract than we're used to seeing from Apple, but I'm super into it. I think the colors are great. And even the black and white option is like pretty solid. So expect a, a nice little new watch face in the update as well. But of course, there are a lot of bug fixes in this update as well, some of which have been around and have affected me forever, and I just, 
I guess I just started to accept it, uh, like the keyboard delay bug, we'll jump into that in a second. But if you do have an iPhone 12 Pro or iPhone 12 Pro Max, Apple says they've corrected an issue with artifacting on HDR photos, and I think I have noticed it. It seemed like it was a bit uh, less clear than it should be, like there was some more stuff in the image than there, there should have been when I'm taking photos, so that has been corrected in 14.4. For widgets, if you use the activity widget right here, sometimes it would display outdated or inaccurate information. I honestly, I've kind of cooled down on my, my side widget view. I still use, you know, calendar and that. And then I like that quote right there. But uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not super heavy on the widgets. I just, I love being able to see the weather on the home screen. Honestly, that's good enough for me. And let me know down below in the comment section what your favorite widgets are. Did you use the activity widget? For the keyboard, Apple has corrected the issue where when you would start typing, nothing would happen. I don't know if you guys saw this in the messages app, but all the time I would, you know, be in go mode. I like, I, I'm tapping, swiping, and then I would start typing, nothing actually comes up whatsoever, which was always so frustrating because then you have to wait and then it's delayed. And Apple's finally corrected this in 14.4, which is just like great. You know, it took them some time out here, but I, I'm happy to tell you, I can confirm I've been, I've been running the beta for this. You know, I still have it like the early version and it is corrected in this release candidate. So when you get it, that will be adjusted. Also, sometimes if you went to messages and you wanted to type something like a different language keyboard would come up than the one you wanted. So Apple's adjust that bug as well. Just so happy that both of these are actually corrected because like it would slow you down. Like I, if you guys have experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, sometimes, you know, if you were in a situation where you had to keep your eyes on something else, maybe in like a moving object, you know, it was just really tough. It was tough when it would freeze up. Following that, if you were listening to audio stories in the news app while using CarPlay, they might not resume after being paused for spoken directions or Siri, pretty oddly specific one there. And finally, enabling switch control and accessibility may prevent phone calls from being answered from the lock screen. Apple has also addressed that bug in iOS 14.0. Four. So this is it. This is 14.4. So now that we've taken a look at the comprehensive list of features and changes in 14.4, when can you actually download it? Like when will the public release of 14.4 be available? I'm thinking sometime early next week. So I'm recording this on January 21st. I'd say between the 25th and the 28th sometime. I mean, it could come out on the 29th of next week as well. But generally when Apple puts out a release candidate, which is the version that I have running on my iPhone 12 Pro here, it is ready to ship. Like there will be no further development or changes until it actually goes out to everybody else. So I'd say expect this very, very soon. And it makes sense. Like Apple doesn't have a lot to test in the update. Well, because there just quite frankly, isn't that much to test or use at all in iOS 14.4. Personally, after seeing all these changes, I don't think that this deserves the 14.x naming glacier. Like I think it should just be a 14.4.2 or 14.3.2 or something like that. Smaller, it just doesn't seem like there's that much going on here. And there aren't any big new features. I mean, maybe the HomePod handoff stuff is new or cool and it is, but even that just doesn't seem like enough here. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like down below, hit subscribe for more, and of course, uh, so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. I've been Sam, I hope you're doing well, and I'll catch you in my next video.